Good morning. In the last lecture, we studied the decoding strategies that we'll use for error detection and error correction for the remainder of this course. In today's lecture, we'll determine the error detecting and error correcting capabilities of a code. And these will be in terms of the distance of the code. Let's first determine the error detecting capability of a block code. So we're considering the scenario where the code is used for detection only. Recall that our decoding strategy in the scenario is that if R is received, then the channel decoder accepts R if and only if R is a code word. This was our natural decoding strategy when a code is used for error detection only. We have a definition. The code C is an E error detecting code if the decoder always makes a correct decision, if E or fewer errors per code word are introduced by the channel. Here's a toy example. Let's look at the code C that has two code words 000 and 111. Then C is a two error detecting code but C is not a three error detecting code. To justify the first claim, note that if either 000 or 111 is transmitted, and either 0, 1, or 2 symbols are flipped, then what is received is not a code word. And this is because the distance between the two code words is 3. This shows that C is a two error detecting code. On the other hand, C is not a three error detecting code. Because if the code word 000 is transmitted and all three bits are flipped during transmission, then what is received is 111, which is a code word. And so our decoder will accept 111 as being the transmitted code word. And so the three errors remain undetected. Therefore, C is not a three error detecting code. The previous example suggests that the error detecting capability of a code depends on its distance, which, if you recall, is the minimum distance between all pairs of distinct code words. We have the following theorem A code C of distance D is a D minus 1 error detecting code, but C is not a D error detecting code. So the error detecting capability of the code is D minus 1. To prove the first claim, suppose the code with C is transmitted. If no errors occur during transmission, then C is received and is therefore accepted since our channel decoder accepts all code words. Suppose now that the number of errors introduced during transmission is at least 1 and at most D minus 1. Let R be the received word. Then the distance between R and C is at least one, because at least one entry of C was transmitted incorrectly. And the distance is at most D minus one by this assumption. Thus, R is not a code word, because the distance between any two distinct code words is at least D. And so our channel decoder will reject R, and that's a correct decision. This proves that the code is a D minus one error detecting code. Let's now prove the second claim. Since a code has distance D, there exist code words C1 and C2, whose distance is exactly D. Suppose now that C1 is transmitted and C2 is received. This could occur if C1 is changed in exactly D positions, namely the positions in which C2 and C1 are different, and moreover, the changed symbols agree with the corresponding symbols in C2. So if C1 is sent and C2 is received, then the channel decoder will accept C2 as a transmitted code word, and so the D errors go undetected. So the channel decoder 
is not capable of always making the correct decision if D or more errors are introduced during transmission. This shows that C is not a D error correcting code. And this proves our theorem. Let's now consider error correction. Recall that our strategy for error correction is IMLD or CMLD. We have a definition. The code C is an E error correcting code if the decoder always makes the correct decision if E or fewer errors per code word are introduced by the channel. Let's look at the simple example of the binary triplication code. One can see that C is a one error correcting code, but C is not a two error correcting code. To justify the first claim, consider if either 000 or 111 is transmitted, and at most one bit is flipped during transmission. Then the received word will be closer to the transmitted code word than to the other code word. And so IMLD and CMLD will make the correct decoding decision. On the other hand, if two errors occur, for example, if 000 is transmitted, the first two bits are flipped, and 110 is received, then the received word is closer to 111 than it is to 000. Hence, IMLD and CMLD will incorrectly decode 110 to 111. And thus C is not a two error correcting code. The previous example illustrates that the error correcting capability of a code depends on its distance. So we can prove the following theorem. A code C of distance D is an E error correcting code where E is a floor of D minus one over two. I'll remind you that the floor of a real number x is the largest integer at most x. For example, the floor of 3.5 is 3, and the floor of 3 is also 3. Here's a proof of the theorem. Suppose that the code with C is transmitted, and at most d minus 1 over 2 errors are introduced during transmission, and r is received then the distance between r and c is at most d minus 1 over 2, because r and c differ in at most d minus 1 over 2 coordinate positions. On the other hand, if c primed is any other code word different from c, then the distance between r and c primed is at least the distance between c and c primed minus the distance between r and c. This follows by the triangle inequality. Now, since the code C has distance D, this first distance is at least equal to D. And we've assumed that the second distance is at most D minus one over two. So I can replace the first distance by D and the second distance by D minus one over two without reversing the inequality. This is equal to D plus one over two, which is greater than D minus one over two which is at least equal to the distance between R and C. So putting this all together, the distance between R and C primed is strictly greater than the distance between R and C. Hence, C is the unique code word of minimum distance from R. So IMLD and CMLD correctly conclude that C was a transmitted code word. Hence, C is an E error correcting code, and this proves the theorem. Here's an exercise you can try. Suppose a code C has distance D, and let E be the floor of D minus one over two. Show that C is not an E plus one error correcting code. So this means that any code of distance D has error correcting capability exactly E and no more.
A natural question to ask is about the existence of codes with certain parameters. More precisely, suppose we're given an alphabet A of size Q, the desired length N of code words, the desired number of code words M, and the desired distance D. One can ask, does there exist an NM block code over A of distance at least D? This is a useful question because the parameter D determines the error correcting capability of the code, and the parameters N, M, and Q determine the information rate of the code. In general, given an alphabet A of size Q and a code length N, we want to find a code with as large an M and D as possible, because that gives us a maximum information rate and also a maximum error correcting capability. This question about the existence of codes can be rephrased as an equivalent sphere packing problem. Let me explain in this Venn diagram. The rectangle represents all n tuples over the alphabet A. M of these n tuples have been chosen as code words and each code word is the center of a sphere of radius E. The sphere of radius E, centered at a code word C, is defined to be the set of all words within distance E of the code word. So the sphere represents all words in AN that differ from C1 in at most E coordinate positions. Now, if the code C has distance at least D, then we proved that C is an E error correcting code, which means that for any pair of distinct code words, the spheres of radius E centered at C1 and C2 must be disjoint. So no two of these spheres of radius E centered about two code words can overlap. So the question about the existence of a code with parameters A, N, M, and D can be rephrased as follows. Can we place M spheres of radius E in AN so that no two spheres overlap? This question is a purely combinatorial question that has been studied by combinatorialists for many decades. You can see this tension between the parameters M and D in the sphere packing problem. For a fixed alphabet and code length N, we would like D to be as large as possible because larger D means larger error correcting capability. But the larger D is, the larger is E, and so these spheres have larger radius. And therefore, it's more difficult to pack larger spheres into the set AN. So we can maybe pack fewer spheres, which means a smaller number of code words M, and therefore a smaller information rate. So there is this natural tension between trying to maximize the information rate and the distance of a code at the same time. To get a feeling for why the sphere packing problem is difficult, let's look at an example with specific parameters. Let's take Q to be 2, N to be 127, and M to be 2 to the power of 64. We're asking now, does there exist an NM binary code with distance at least 21. So now AN is a set of all binary 127 tuples, and it has size 2 to the power 127, which is a huge number. Of these 2 to the 127 binary 127 tuples, we need to select 2 to the 64 as code words in such a way that no two spheres of radius E which is now 10, overlap. This is a difficult question because one just can't pick an arbitrary collection of 2 to the 64 code words from the set AN and then verify that the code indeed has distance at least 21. And that's because there are too many pairs of code words whose distances need to be evaluated. Moreover, even if the answer to the question is yes, meaning such a code exists. 
we really want to be able to describe the code words in such a way that encoding and decoding can be done efficiently. In this course, we're taking a practical point of view, and we care about efficient encoding and decoding, not merely about the existence of codes. We'll construct the code with these parameters at the end of the course. We'll do this by picking code words to be the vectors in a certain vector subspace over the vector space of all binary 127 tuples. Furthermore, we'll pick a vector subspace with additional structure, and the structure will be that the vectors form an ideal in a certain polynomial ring. So the main tools we'll use will be from linear algebra and some abstract algebra, in particular, the theory of rings and fields. Before I get to the coding theory, let me spend the next five video lectures introducing you to the basic properties of finite fields. And then we'll return to constructing so-called linear codes. The next lecture will be the first of five on finite fields. We'll define commutative rings and fields and review some basic notions of the integers modulo n. In particular, we'll prove that the integers modulo n is a field if and only if n is prime. See you later.